Good, very good. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you very much for having us here. Uh, can we still say the new CEO for Bentley North America? It is a year and a few days. Yes. Okay, so, so I think you can we're still, still on the guarantee. Still, you can still say new, absolutely, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so we're here in a beautiful Lime Rock to test drive this uh, new addition to the Bentley lineup, the Mentaiga. What's first? Let, let correct me, please, if you want. Like, what's the correct pronunciation? To that is the correct pronunci pronunciation. Yes, uh, it's named after a mountain range in the Canary Islands. Yeah, that is um, very rugged um, and uh, um, projects really the name of uh, of adventure and um, and a, a certain degree of um, of, uh, of excitement and uh, and uh, dynamicism. Yeah, and uh, by coincidence, the first three letters are the name of the company. That is a very nice coincidence, yes. <laughs> yeah, very well thought. So, uh, tell us a little bit about this uh, vehicle. Oops, safety first, I forgot. Um, um, this, uh, this is a new entry. Uh, you're pretty much creating a segment, a new segment, because there's nothing really at this moment to compare with, right? Well, it, it is the, the most luxurious and fastest SUV in the market. Uh, in a lot of ways, uh, we believe that there were number of very good premium cars, premium SUVs. The SUV segment is the um, fastest growing still uh, worldwide really and um, we believe that um, there was room for a ultra luxury high performance SUV in the marketplace and uh, who better but then Bentley to, yeah. uh, to create such a car. So this car can you tell us a little bit about the specs, uh, you said the most powerful, uh, what's, what's, uh, what's the engine, the horsepower? Well, we're talk kind of we're talking about um, uh, 600 uh, brake horsepower um, the ability to accelerate from 0 to 60 miles an hour in 4 seconds and uh, wow, top speed of, uh, of just under 190 miles an hour. For a big vehicle, uh, that's, that's impressive uh, figures really. And then on top of that you have uh, enough space for either 5 or 4 uh, people depending on the configuration. Right? You, you, can, you can configure the car to have um, 4 seats with a very um, exclusive nice um, center console on the back you can have a five seat configuration uh, or ultimately within six months time we will, we will also be able to offer a, a seven seat configuration oh at seven even okay that's yeah. that's that's even better so um this car is obviously there's a lot of, of, of high quality craftsmanship that goes into this and and that what makes it so exclusive and, and so so refined in every aspect right from the engine to the suspension of, to the interior that are beautiful well the, the the position of Bentley in general is to bridge and offer a customer the two extremes of very extreme performance on one side and really ultimate luxury on the other and that luxury we define in terms of craftsmanship in terms of materials being used um, and um, the sort of attention to detail that uh, the customers at this end of the market expect. Yeah. So can you tell us a little bit about uh, what, uh, I mean, one or two aspects, I mean, there's like so much that goes into creating a car like this, but what what are the few things that make it like so special, like, especially in the process of, of, of making things? For example, the wood, I understand, is like a process that takes a long, long, long time. Well, the, 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 the wood, first of all, is the, the wood in any Bentley um, all comes from one and the same tree. So that as you put the wood panels together, um, you don't have different swirls and and um, and yeah. um, so it, it it all fits. Uh, the other, as an example, the steering wheel that you uh, that you have there, it's the, um, the it, it is it is hand stitched leather. It takes somebody between four and six hours no, just uh, to, to, uh, to, to stitch the, to, and hand stitch the leather onto the steering wheel in in several um, in several processes to make sure that it is on on hand, one hand very smooth. And gives you that very that the very luxurious feeling. On the other hand, of course, also is is uh, is so tight that it doesn't shift around. And yeah, and, uh, and it's pretty amazing when you really pay attention to it. You said it's handmade, but it really looks like it's done by a machine because the precision and like the stitching is right, similar right, at every point. Right, so that's yes. true craftsmanship yes, yes, there, right? Yes. The leather seats, for instance, are all done by hand. Where we do automate things, it is to um, either find efficiencies or or to be. I suppose um, somewhat responsible. For instance, the um, the cutting machine that cuts out the um, the pieces necessary to put the interior together, including the seats, yeah. will measure first itself the form of the cowhide, and then it will calculate the most efficient way 
to Take cut it. out all the pieces and leave as little and, and use uh, as much material as possible. Yeah. Yes. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah. yeah. And uh, then uh, a lot of technology, obviously the latest technology, including uh, Wi-Fi capability and all that. The uh, electronic capability of this car is essentially jumping what we jumping five, I guess five generations ahead uh, from a, from a Bentley perspective, and you have all the all the features that you would expect from a connect, connectivity perspective. Um, from a navigation perspective, you can choose between Google Maps uh, online, or you can or you can or the or the onboard system. Uh, but what we try to do is define the usability and the and the, uh, the the way you operate these systems in such a manner that it doesn't become complicated. In other words, it should be second nature to use all this technology rather than getting confused by all the technology. Uh, so a lot of time is spent by our engineers to make sure that everything that's that is sophisticated is behind the scenes, yeah. and you really have a have a I guess luxury defined as being the, the, having the features available, but very simplistic to use. Yeah, that's uh, some of the issues that come in those uh, initial quality reports from JD Powers and so on. Yes. Like, it's not that the, the technology doesn't work; it's that sometimes it's so complicated. People yes. think that it doesn't right. work and complain about it. Yes. No, I think that um, that certainly that is that is one of one of the key aspects to how we will define luxury going into the future, and um, all the technology that is going to come into the future, whether it's autonomous driving or whether it's um, um, yet more features that you can do on your on your iPhone and then again on these systems here is that it's that the customer has really the ability to to program it himself yeah. in such a manner that the key features that he wants similar to how you would use the iPhone that the key features that you want are at your fingertips and you don't have to go through entire menus and everything else every time to be able to do that yeah. so going back to my original question you've been here with the company just a little bit over a year we can say that you are uh, getting into the company at the best time of its history, we can say because I mean the current your current lineup it's uh, really doing well, and now you have this addition that has, it's going to send the, the sales figures through the roof because we've seen this example in other companies in the past, and we've yes. seen like as you said like the SUV segment it's growing all over the place, especially in the luxury. Department. That is correct. Yes, I mean I, I think I mean, obviously it, it is a very exciting time to be with Bentley. Um, this is only the first product of a range of new or updated um, cars and platforms that we will bring over the next five to seven years. Yeah. And uh, the target is going to be that it's within five years' time. By the time we have 2021, uh, we will have five platforms, um, all of which will be new, will be the sort of, sort of technology that you um, and uh, and features that you find in the in the Bentayga at this point in time. And uh, from a from a growth and from a um, from a future perspective, it's very exciting to be with the brand. So you mentioned five. You we now have the Continental, uh, both coupe and convertible. Yeah. We have the Mulsanne, and the third one will be this one. No, we have. Um, you, you also have Flying Spur. So oh, the Flying third. Spur. Yeah, I'm you sorry. have this as a fourth, and then um, you are aware of the uh, concept car that we showed in Geneva last year, yes. the EXP10. Beautiful and certainly, car. Certainly, there are some thoughts now being developed as to what it takes uh, and how we're going to put that sort of a car into production as well. So Bentley is growing a lot, but when does a luxury brand, I mean, starts to get to a higher, I mean, obviously you want to sell more cars, but there's also, I guess, a threshold when you want to yes. like, keep it exclusive, but where, where does that, where's the roof for that? Uh, Bent, Bentley this last year finished with just over 10,000 cars in sales yeah. and worldwide. and. Um, our chairman has articulated a, a vision that by the time we, uh, we are in 2025 um, to double that to somewhere just over 20,000. Okay. Um, which uh, pretty ambitious. By, by, well, by adding, but you're adding. Remember, we're doing 10,000 with three platforms. Yeah. And we're adding two platforms that are very, in, a, in particular with the SUV, in a very, a very uh, popular and growing segment. So I think those are those are ambitious, ambitious, but but certainly reachable targets. Having said that, also though. Is um, I don't think that um, 20,000 cars in a worldwide market of over 65 million yeah, is going much. to really risk our exclusivity very much. Yeah, exactly. So um, talking about numbers of production, I, I understand that the production for this year, next year, for this uh, SUV is already spoken for, yes. or sold, or, or I mean, people are ready. Yes. Uh, so um, what will be the process if people are interested in getting one now? 
Well, I mean, the, the, the obvious process is you go see a dealer, yeah. and um, a dealer will be able to tell you as to when an order will, a fresh order will be available. And uh, so we basically have um, sufficient uh, orders and or expressions of interest from customers um, for the next 12 months. Uh, but um, I would not discourage anybody to, um, to see a dealer in any case and yeah. become familiar with the car and, uh, and, uh, and place an order going forward. Yeah, and at this moment, that, uh, the, I mean, you're, uh, they're going to build how many a, a year? Uh, the production capacity is somewhere between four and a half and 5,000 cars yeah. a year. And, and typically for the U.S., we account for about a third of worldwide business. Yeah, okay. And the car starts about what, two hundred twenty-eight? Two hundred twenty-nine thousand dollars. Twenty-nine. Okay. And uh, you, um, you can, of course, as we you can with any bespoke product, uh, do very interesting things to um, to add to that. Uh, the most extreme option, of course, is that we have is a Breitling touring on watch uh, that fits into the oh, wow. into the dashboard, self-winding, that uh, in its own right. Um, is uh, is valued at about 150,000 euros. Oh, wow. So that will increase the price a little. Yes, bit. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so uh, final question: um, You not only the head of uh, Bentley here in the U.S. but also the whole Americas, right? Yes. So how's the how's the market doing in uh, South America? I mean, uh, pretty well, big markets like Brazil, Chile, uh, Mexico, maybe. It's a big market, but um, uh, obviously with uh, Brazil, it's not a secret. Right at this moment in time, a few struggles with the economy. Yeah. Politically um, and socially, and politically even. somewhat, um, but uh, we're represented right now directly in Chile. We're direct. We're represented in um, in Brazil. We're all represented also in Mexico, and um, and we're represented in Puerto Rico. Uh, so we do see potential um, to be able to um, expand our representation in South America, and certainly the markets aren't going to be challenged forever. Uh, so it's just a, it's just a question of time until. Uh, the um, of course the markets then, then then improve again. Yeah. So thank you much for your time and this short drive and this. Uh, I mean, if you notice, uh, people who watching, we were driving down the road and super quiet and coming. So that's another aspect of the luxury of this vehicle. Uh, and we're gonna go now and make some noise because we're going to go on the racetrack. I here. hope you enjoy yourself. Yeah. We we have Derek Bell here with us. Yeah. Who is of course a multiple Le Mans winner. Um, he's now an ambassador for the Bentley brand uh, and he will uh, give you a few final points on how to drive this car very quickly on the track. Excellent. Well, I hope thank you enjoy it. Thank you very much for your thank time. Thank you for your time.